touched on it briefly, but the way that light and, and heat with it change throughout the day is how we define time, right? We know what time it is based on where the sun is in the sky, where the moon is in the sky. So it's changes in light that let us know what time it is and, and help us track the movement of time. What do we say? Um, yeah, how light changes as time moves through space. So these illuminated beings, the sun and moon, stars and planets, are zooming through space, and that's how we measure time. Changes in light as time moves through space. And then likewise, in the morning, the sun comes up, the light changes, it gets warmer. At high noon, the light has changed. It's as hot as it's going to get. As the sun sets, the light continues to change. And with these changes come specific biological mechanisms that are automatic. Billions of years of evolution has been uh, both created by and uh, built into all of life based on the movement of the sun, moon, and earth. So uh, this is the Ayurvedic view of a day. And there are different times of day that favor different activities. You are welcome to go to the post office at midnight, but you may it may not be the most efficient time to go. Just so with when to eat, when to exercise, when to work, when to snuggle with your loved ones, when to sleep and dream and meditate, all of these activities, the, the basic uh, life-affirming processes that keep us alive have their specific time of day where they are more favored and more difficult. Do you want to float downstream or swim upstream? That's the question. That's the value of studying this map of time. And so we can run through it quickly here again. This is a major focus in the light on time process. But so at sunrise, sunrise marks the start of kapha time. And kapha is that earth element, water element. And, and so actually, let's let's start with vata time before sunrise. The two or four hours before sunrise is what the yogis call Brahma Muhurta. And this is the time to be dreaming or meditating. They say the veil is thin at this time. This is when your meditation is likely to be deepest. You're you got the best chance to have lucid dreams, or right, really uh, spiritual dreams, and, and you're going to connect with that subtle source of all things easier in these hours before sunrise. And there's good science that, suggest, uh, that shows that radio signals actually travel way further in the three hours before dawn than they do at any other time of day. And again, that has to do with the types of light that are filtered through the atmosphere at that time. And so if you think about, you know, the earth is turning on its axis, turning towards the sun, and by turning towards the sun, there's this wave of light and heat that is sweeping across the planet at all times. And so from your particular location on the planet, there's this wave of heat and light coming towards you. And in the in the three hours before that arrives, there's this sort of special at atmospheric climate zone that allows uh, radio waves to travel more quickly. And it has this specific electromagnetic frequency that the yogis over thousands of years of practice say that's the best time to meditate. That's the best time to pray. That's when the electric signals in your brain are radiating furthest out into space. So uh, some, some metaphysics some physics all sort of jumbled together there. And then the sun rises and it's time to get up and have a body, right? And to that kapha, the earth and water, the stuff of physicality and to go out and this is a great time to exercise, do hard physical labor, get up, milk the cows, plow the fields, exercise, do hard concrete work, move your body. And, and that's, that's the quality of kapha time. Also time to do hygiene, clean your body, take care of your physical body. Then when the sun is overhead, that's pitta time, the hottest time of day when focus is likely to be strongest. Again, that, that laser type of focus is favored. And so this is the time to do your work, build your career, 
be ambitious, accomplish the transformative tasks that take the world from one place to the next, that bend the arc of history towards justice. And, and so this is the time of aspiration and ambition and time to take action on that. Visionary leadership is the, the mode of those hours. And then 2, 3 p.m. comes around and everybody gets sleepy, everybody gets groggy, everybody needs a nap, things get sort of hectic. It's those uh, weary hours of the afternoon where most traffic accidents happen. Uh, this is a great time for a nap. This is a great time for creative, playful conversations with friends. Uh, really, you want to have eaten your largest meal of the day when the fire is strongest in the pitta time so that you're grounded and fed and stable during this vata time. You want to be careful during this vata time. And then sunsets. It's kapha time again. Time to go home, connect with loved ones, do domestic tasks, cook, clean the kitchen, go on a date. Uh, be cozy. Uh, again, this sort of family, this watery, earthy, stable, domestic kind of vibe. And, and so that's evening coffee time. And we want to get into bed before about 10 p.m., be asleep by about 10 p.m., because that heavy, dense coffee time is when we want to be asleep. Because how often have you been super sleepy at 9.30 p.m. and you think, oh, I'll just send one more email. All of a sudden it's 10.30. You're like, wait, I've got a whole new business plan or this whole new way of living and I'm going to start executing. I'm going to buy a domain name at 11 p.m. and work on it and build a website. And all of a sudden it's 2 a.m. It's like, wait, what just happened? And you get to midnight and you need that midnight snack because that pitta element, that fire is up and you're burning energy. And the ideal expression of that dark pitta time, that evening pitta time, is to be digesting internally, digesting the leftover food from the day, digesting the emotions and information of the day. That sort of, we want to be in deep sleep so that the nighttime cleaning crew of the body, of the psyche can come through and sort things out, organize, put all the memories in their proper file cabinets so that when Vata time comes around, you're ready for creative work, connection with spirit and, and clarity. So that's, that's the gist of an Ayurvedic day. Okay. At this point, you're welcome. Just, just interrupt me, hop in, raise your hand, send a note to the chat. Uh, turn on your video and start talking if, if you have questions, comments, concerns, confusion, anything like that. Right. So this is important. Uh, for all of you who have studied some Ayurveda, this map of the day might be super familiar, but it's important to recognize that this evenly divided, you know, 6 a.m. sunrise, 6 p.m. sunset is only true on the spring and autumnal equinoxes. During the winter, that midday pitta time is much, much shorter. You know, the sun doesn't rise until 7.30 in the morning. The sun sets at like 4.30 or 5. So this, this daylight, these daylight hours are much shorter, making these nighttime kapha pitta and vata times much, much longer. And so to recognize that, and then of course the inverse in summer, right? Where the, the pitta time in the middle of the day is much longer in the middle of the summer at the summer solstice than it is at any other time. And so just to recognize that these Vata Pitta and Kapha times of day will warp and waft as the, as the seasons change and as the hours of daylight change, again, as the quality and quantity of light changes as time moves through space. <clears throat> 